uh, let's jump right into it. I, I like to begin presentations with the end in mind. And I want to start with this quote from the American Federation of Teachers, which really captures the essence of this presentation and what we want everyone to know. It's straightforward and should give hope to every child, parent, teacher, principal, and community, um, and even employers. Uh, with the re new research, actually, but even more importantly, the being new, is the fact that we finally have both scientific and research consensus about how to get kids reading. Over 90% of all kids, including many that are now classified as learning disabled, can read well with intensive early instruction delivered by skilled educators. So you've got to give AFT credit for their willingness to stand on the, on the science and research because, you know, to say all kids can learn without hedging in this charged social, political, racial environment and actually mean it says a lot about their worldview. The fact is, we're a long way from having all kids, but a handful, um, be able to read well. And in those situations, under duress, um, we found out what we find out what we truly believe. So this data is stressful. There's no doubt about it. But AFT, in this example, is choosing to ground its belief in the research and the science. So they can responsibly make that statement because they understand and can even list the elements of an effective reading program. So these pillars of early literacy um, that you see in front of you, the, the phonemic awareness, the phonics, the comprehension, the uh, vocabulary and the fluency, most of the so-called reading wars were about narrow views on these pillars. We need all of them to be given you know, consistent time and to be given consistent attention in regular core classroom instruction. But just as important is the phrase explicit, systematic, core classroom instruction. So what the, we at the NAACP are saying, is, and we appreciate CORE for providing this platform, is that racism needs oxygen. And having explicit, systematic instruction in the core classroom sets off the supply of oxygen by limiting some common tendencies. When we take things step by step, you know, from the beginning in a, in a systematic way, we avoid assumptions about where kids should start or what they're capable of. We'll talk more about this later, but it reduces the impact of adult learners' biases, um, keeps us from discriminating intentionally or not, and considering all the variables that impact student learning. You know, it's even more important uh, to limit the impact of those things by starting at the beginning and just walking through the standards. So, and of course, this also includes a strong writing component, component. But as you see these elements listed here, um, the most effective curricula, meaning that these curricula actually, you know, help the highest percentage of kids become strong readers, you know, in a well-matched, uh, with a well-matched curriculum in, that fits the context of the school and the community. Um, but these curricula embed these elements includes a strong writing component, but it also has these things. And some popular programs actually uh, now that have been um, in use around the country are starting to adjust to include all these pillars. But that last item, I just want to take a moment to, to look at that last item. It's high quality PD is really important. You really can't expect teachers to know what they haven't been taught. And frankly, the same goes for administrators who are supposed to help teachers grow uh, by giving them feedback. High quality PD is critical to an effective reading program. And you might hear, you know, these elements called evidence-based or research-based practices or uh, scientifically based reading practices. There's lots of different, you know, acronyms that we use for these things and, and taglines for these things. But today, let's just use the shorthand of structured literacy to describe what we're talking about. And actually, I mean, that's important because, you know, it turns out that most kids actually require a structured approach. This infographic really synthesizes the research well. It's embedded in that statement by AFT is the word if. So, yeah, over 80, over 90 percent of kids can learn and read well if we leverage a structured approach that included all those elements. 
the challenges we face are so consuming. The conditions and dangers that we can see are real, from the distractions of the reading wars that emphasize, you know, one pillar over another, to conditions that make it hard for parents just to maintain, the teachers to teach, to make it hard for students to learn. Um, the impact of these things on our students, families, and schools are really difficult to measure, but it often does produce stress and crises. So AFT, again, you know, they're providing perspective with which the NAACP agrees. Regardless of the politics of it all, we have to understand that parents want us to start with three things. Keep the kids safe, teach them how to read, and get them college and career ready. There are other important things, don't get me wrong, but it starts there. And if we can't do that, of course, there will be various reactions, both internal and external. So yes, these things are challenges, and we see them. But what's missing is the reality that there are also things we cannot see, things that lie beneath the surface. And today we want to touch on some of these things and even get into the deeper waters, if you will. So let's, let's start with, with racism and reading science denial. There are a lot of definitions of racism, but we're going to use one uh, created by Dr. Audrey Smedley at VCU. It's helpful here in our context because it focuses on practices uh, or, and, and beliefs. She says that racism is essentially when we act like there's a causal link between physical inheritance and intellect. So a popular societal belief is that, you know, kids are born smart, they're born kind of smart, maybe kind of dumb, and dumb. Now that's a popular Belief. It's not often articulated, but it's there. And so the credit in that context, and even more so the blame for, for student outcomes, is at least partly assigned to this, to what they're inheriting. So if one has that view, you know, you're unlikely to construct, or you're likely to construct an architect, uh, an archetype for success and for failure. And it's likely that that archetype is centered on race, but also leverages other characteristics to interpret reality. 